These are the big cats. Growing up to 10 feet long, weighing more than 600 pounds. They lurk in the shadows, designed not to be seen, appearing and disappearing in the blink of an eye. Perfectly designed for ambush. In Tanzania, Africa, lions rule the savanna. It's 9 p.m. And lions, maybe even a whole pride, are hunting for prey. Hundreds of pounds of muscle and bone slip silently through the bush. And tonight, their search for food takes them to an edge of a village called Mkaranga. Police officers mingle around the local station house. No one is aware of the danger lurking nearby. Until terrified cries come from the forest. Two men running for their lives. Behind them, two lions working together execute an ambush. Within seconds, the lions reach the men just outside the village police station. The officers are trapped inside with no way to help the victims. One policeman takes aim through the protected window and fires. But it's far too late. Both men are now dead. Only later will he learn that his shots were successful and that the lions too are dead. But this attack reveals some critical aspects of big cat engineering. The attack began with a lion's signature strategy, launching their eight foot long bodies directly onto the victim. Once a lion pounces on its quarry, it uses pure muscle power to haul the prey to the ground. The men were trapped beneath the big cat's giant eight inch paws and four inch claws, pinning them down. The jaws hinge open to reveal three to four inch canines that can bite with enough power to crack a spine. These victims have joined a long list of tragedies in Tanzania. On average, lions kill at least one person in this country every week. And as more lion habitat is converted into farmland, scientists fear these numbers will rise. Tonight's attack took place in the cover of darkness, which may be the ideal setting for a big cat attack. They are engineered for nighttime ambush. The police officers saw with their own eyes one of the special powers that big cats possess. Lions when they are in the darkness. They can see anything approaching them. One essential piece of gear for a nighttime strike lies inside a cat's eyes. Just behind the retina lies a layer of reflecting cells. When light enters a big cat's eyes, it hits these reflecting cells and bounces back, enhancing whatever the cat sees. Human eyes don't have this feature. It's one reason a cat's vision is six times as powerful as a human's in the dark. This reflective coating is also why a cat's eyes shine in the night. When the men in Tanzania bolted from the forest, it was already dark. Too dark for humans, but more than enough light for the cats. Faint moonlight is all a cat needs for their eyes reflective cells to do their work. But big cats have another way to navigate the darkest of nights. There's another powerful tool on a cat's face that can help guide it toward prey. Even in pitch black. Over a dozen whiskers are actually a big cat's sixth sense. As the creature prowls, the snout flexes, and its whiskers point forward, seeking out obstacles and even prey. Whiskers are so sensitive, 
it can detect even tiny puffs of air. A bundle of nerves at the base of each shaft sends signals to the brain, telling the cat something is out there. And when a big cat locks onto its prey, it normally waits and watches, staying still for up to nine hours, gathering key information on their target, its size, strength, and distance, the direction it's moving, and whether it's injured or has another weakness the cat can exploit. Big cats do everything they can to increase their chances of a successful ambush. And when prey is finally taken down, the whiskers have another critical role to play. When a cat bites down on prey in the darkness, the whiskers can angle forward to feel their way around the fur and skin of the victim. Scientists believe the whiskers may be gathering key data on the status and position of the prey, how much the victim is struggling, or even when and where to execute a precision bite. The very tools that big cats use to navigate their nighttime world, their vision, and their whiskers have helped make them almost perfect nocturnal hunters. But these individual talents become even more forbidding when you realize that lions often hunt together. Lions are not like other cats. They are highly cooperative hunters. A pride of lions takes on a herd of prey like a team of special forces. Two advanced scouts move silently into position at the back and sides of the herd. Other members of the pride stalk closer from the front. In a flash, the ambush begins. The prey suddenly realizes it has nowhere to turn. And the result is inevitable. The kill takes just a few seconds. The young, weak, and injured are the easiest targets. The feasting can go on for hours. Deep in the bush of southern Tanzania, a team of researchers is scouring the backcountry for big cats, including paw marks left by these 500-pound predators on the prowl. Dennis Ikonda and Darian Simpson think they're on the trail of a lion. But instead, they encounter a leopard. It has stepped into one of their pressure-activated foot snares. The animal is unharmed, but he's not exactly pleased. Stand behind me now. This leopard weighs about 130 pounds. Lions and tigers are four times heavier than leopards, which makes them more powerful. But leopards may be the most aggressive big cat of all. A leopard go at you pretty much like a wide open chainsaw being thrown at you. You're going to get torn up very bad. Um, and they get on top of you and they're going to they're going to rabbit kick their hind legs all over you and lacerate you with their front feet. They're going to be trying to bite you in the head and the neck. And their speed is incredible. To get close, the researchers need to use a tranquilizer. It's a light dose that will be reversed once the examination is complete. It's starting to get there. He's passing out. Finally, it's safe to get close and explore the unique features of this big cat. See, they're made to do combat. Leopards have really impressive shoulders. All the strength here in the neck and the shoulder hold something twice his size into a tree. Driving all big cats are two sets of powerful muscles in their front shoulders and rear legs. Lions and tigers use their muscles to launch, tackle, and tear. But a leopard's muscle system has to do more. 
because they are the smallest of the three big cats, they must share territory with their larger cousins, looking for a free meal. Against one of their relatives, a leopard doesn't stand a chance. They're only one quarter of a lion size. And that's where the muscles kick in, to drag prey out of reach of its competitors. A leopard's muscles are so powerful, they can pull a carcass weighing more than the cat's own body weight right up a tree trunk. So all big cats need muscle to catch, seize, and even protect their hard-earned meal. But beneath the fur, skin, and muscle lurks even more sophisticated apparatus that scientists are still trying to understand. And the data reveals exactly how a big cat deploys its stunning array and brings a victim to its knees. In Tanzania, our search for the ultimate cat continues. This snared leopard reveals some of the most complex and deadly predatory tools of any animal walking the earth. First up, the claws. You can see the, the foot, same track as your house cat at home, same configuration. Needle sharp, it's needle sharp. Very formidable weapon. They can run these things clear to the hilt and lacerate you almost half an inch deep to an inch deep. The claws on a big cat's front feet activate with lightning fast speed. At rest, an elastic ligament contracts to hold the claws in their sheaths, inside the paw. Here, the razor-sharp tips are safely protected. In attack mode, the ligament extends. Muscle contractions straighten the bones, pushing each claw outside the sheath. All this in a fraction of a second. A big cat's claws multitask. Leopards need them to climb trees. And all big cats rely on them for the kill. When fully extended, they sink deep into their victims. Even giant prey falls to its knees, caught in an inescapable death grip. When this hooks into you... Dr. Bhagavan Antle is an experienced big cat handler. In the wild, this claw when being used hooks into the flesh and it's actually going in like a fish hook. It's got a backwards hook to it. It can't even come loose. A lot of the time the animal can't even release the hook. It buries in so deeply to get it to come back out. As it buries in and a pull happens, this buries in so deeply that it's hooked into its prey in a permanent fashion. Big cats have five of these hidden weapons in each of their front feet, and four in the rear. Only cheetahs have a modified design. Its claws don't fully retract, which helps keep a racing cheetah right on target. So every big cat is built with powerful muscles for the chase, and lightning fast claws for the takedown. But when it comes to killing and eating giant prey, it's a set of specialized teeth that do the work. Every big cat's jaws are lined with 30 teeth. At the front, massive canines, up to four inches long, have evolved for the killing bite. Once the prey is down and out, the rear teeth come into play, called carnassials. These are engineered for only one purpose, slicing flesh into bite-sized chunks. Carnassials can't chew or grind because a cat's jaws can't move side to side like ours do. They're only able to go up and down. The upper and lower carnassials never actually meet. Instead, they slide right by one another like a pair of powerful scissors shearing off another meal as they go. Most of the tiger's eating is done by turning the head sideways and scissoring off chunks. They aren't able to pull anything up this way. They have to turn their head sideways and very slowly get in there and scissor the pieces off to get a chunk of meat. 
Delivering crushing bites and slicing raw flesh takes some serious power. The jaws of the biggest cats can hinge closed with more than 900 pounds of force. But how does a big cat's head provide this kind of power? Experts here at the Creighton University Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska are about to find out. A big cat is on its way in for a CAT scan. This tiger's name is Laiku. She lives at the nearby Henry Dorley Zoo. The team is hoping that first ever 3D images of this tiger's head and body will unlock the structural secrets of big cats like never before. As Laiku slides into position, vets carefully monitor her heart breathing rates and body temperature. It takes three hours to scan Laiku's body. But finally, cutting edge images appear. Unprecedented data of a tiger's entire body, bones, organs, and heart. Doctors Ed Walsh and Matthew Omajola analyze the scans. This virtual skull reveals one hidden clue of big cat engineering. To generate their incredible jaw strength, five times more powerful than humans, big cats sacrificed brain size for brute strength. While a human head is mostly brain, protected by a thin shell of skull and small muscles, big cats are the opposite. A much smaller brain housed in a thickly boned skull. The winged design of this skull also serves a critical function, providing maximum surface area for the attachment of giant muscles powering the jaws. More CAT scan images reveal how a big cat actually powers this bone crushing apparatus. Two giant carotid arteries pump fresh blood into the churning jaw muscles. Two smaller carotids deliver blood to the relatively smaller brain. In humans, the pipelines are reversed. The larger carotids nourish the brain, while the smaller arteries feed our relatively tiny jaw muscles. Compared to the relatively small area of the cranial vault, uh, I think you can indeed see where the power is in the carnivore versus the um, primate. So it doesn't look like he thinks very much about what he's doing, but acts quickly and powerfully. <laughs> I, I think so. A big cat's jaw is one way it's engineered to maximize meat consumption. Scientists call big cats hypercarnivores. That's because these predators skip the veggies. Their only diet is the flesh of their prey. They eat almost 80 pounds of it a week. Their entire bodies are equipped for this purpose. They're massive, meat-processing machines. Claws to lock prey into position. Canines to kill. And inside the mouth of these hypercarnivores is another remarkable tool that makes big cats ultimate scavengers down to the very last morsel. The surface of a big cat's tongue holds a triangle pattern of tiny tools designed specially for licking flesh. Get out a magnifier and the tongue's surface looks more like a forest of spikes arching backward toward the cat's throat. When the cat licks its prey, the angled spikes scrape meat right off the bone. A cat's tongue is a giant flexible rake engineered to maximize every meal gorging themselves on an average of 10 pounds of meat a day doesn't slow a big cat down. Their stomachs are actually much more acidic than our own. And because meat takes less time to digest than plants, a big cat's intestines are 50% shorter than a comparably sized herbivore. Meaning big cats can recover quickly from a feast and are ready to hunt again. 
every part of a big cat's body is finely tuned for success. Muscles, claws, jaws, tongue, and intestines. All functioning together to keep the kings of the forest and the savanna purring. But there are significant differences between lions, leopards, and tigers. And in India, one chilling attack reveals how one cat pushes the limits, performing the seemingly impossible in the eternal search for prey. Top predators are built to push the limits in search of a meal. Great white sharks weigh up to 4,000 pounds, but can still leap completely out of the water. A giant polar bear weighing half a ton can punch through solid ice pursuing a seal. But what about big cats? How do they push the limits in their hunt for food? One stunning piece of evidence comes from an attack in India. It reveals the true physical capabilities of the world's largest cats. The Sunderbans, a vast swamp on the border of India and Bangladesh. 3,500 square miles of nearly impenetrable mangroves, mud, and salty water. An unlikely habitat for man or beast. But an estimated 200 Bengal tigers prowl the giant swamp. They weigh up to 600 pounds and pursue whatever prey they can find. But these giant cats are not like the others. They use their powerful bodies for a surprising mode of ambush. It's afternoon on one of the hundreds of waterways that crisscross the giant swamp. A boat glides through the mangroves. On board, three local fishermen. In the forest nearby, a tiger spots the men and moves in closer. Using the branches and green leaves as cover, it can see the men but the men don't even know it's there. Tigers are engineered with highly advanced camouflage, refined by millions of years of evolution. Experts have broken down big cat camo into two phenomena. First is a disguising technique perfected by tigers called pattern disruption. A tiger's vertical stripes work to disrupt a reading of the cat's body shape. The stripes are designed to disappear in the silhouettes of countless trees, allowing the big cat to remain hidden in the shadows. Next, there's color blending. Color combinations of the cat's fur, orange and black, also help it blend into the environment, especially at dawn and dusk. The total package of disruption and color blending can make the Sunderbond tigers almost invisible. This combination of pattern disruption and color blending makes a leafy forest a tiger's safe zone. A hungry cat at the water's edge silently tracks the men. And then, without warning, it decides to leave the safety of the foliage and does something we don't normally associate with cats. It plunges straight into the water actually swimming directly toward the boat. In order to patrol and hunt in these swamps, these Bengal tigers have adapted, becoming master swimmers. Scientists have long known that tigers are comfortable in the water. One reason may be that their ancestors migrated from Siberia and needed a way to cool off in the steamy forest. In this rare footage from India, a camera trap catches a large male testing the waters of a sheltered pool, immersing himself to beat the heat. 
In the Sonderbonds, tigers have taken this affinity for water one step further. Scientists have found evidence of one Bengal tiger that swam almost three miles across the mangrove swamps. But how do they do it? One answer lies beneath the fern, running from a big cat skull down to its tail. On land, tigers are engineered to use all four legs to power themselves across the jungle floor. Their paws strike the ground and the leg and shoulder muscles pull the body forward. When a tiger enters the water, this running motion adapts to the liquid world. It's believed the tiger's paws splay open and the claws partially emerge, creating giant flippers up to eight inches wide. The powerful front legs do most of the work, churning through the water. The rear legs act more like a rudder, allowing a 400-pound cat to gracefully swim and hunt for prey. But navigating this liquid world is just one way these tigers have adapted to life in a mangrove swamp. Environmental pressures have forced these animals to find another unusual way to take advantage of the sea. These tigers may drink brackish water. But the Bengal tiger's powerful combination of camouflage and swimming have also made it a deadly threat to people. And this hungry tiger pushes on toward its human target. When the big cat comes within striking distance, another engineering marvel takes over. These fishermen sit in a dugout canoe, several feet above the water. But this tiger is equipped to actually launch itself up and out of the water, dragging its prey off the boat. The tiger thrashes Ashit as the men try to rescue their friend. The big cat's jaws grab the victim's head. But the panicked fishermen pummel the tiger with branches until it decides that this meal is more trouble than it's worth. Ashit is critically injured. The tiger's canines have punched through his skull. But Ashit survives. How does a giant cat launch itself out of the sea in pursuit of a meal? Phil Reiser, a keeper at the Bronx Zoo, explores this question. Phil has been working with tigers for seven years. Today, he's preparing to find out how high Sasha, a resident male Siberian tiger, can jump. Siberians are actually the largest tigers on Earth weighing up to 650 pounds and growing up to 10 feet long. But like their cousins, the Bengal tiger, they've evolved the way to turn their massive bulk into a highly controlled flying machine. Phil lifts a big piece of cat food 12 and a half feet off the ground. He's hoping Sasha will be able to reach it in one giant leap. Sasha enters the testing ground and immediately senses the food. His first attempt falls short, so Phil drops the meat a notch. Sasha coils his body, preparing to leap, and this time snares the quarry. Reviewing Sasha's jump can reveal exactly how a tiger makes a nearly vertical leap for prey. The airborne assault begins with Sasha's powerful leg muscles. Six major muscle groups are designed to propel his body forward or even straight into the air. Exploding his 500 pound frame almost 11 feet high. Next, Sasha's two front legs reach up as far forward as possible, maximizing his reach. Sasha's claws deploy just before impact, ensuring that whatever they grab doesn't get away. 
The claws gain purchase as Sasha reaches the apex of his jump. He falls back to the ground with his meal in hand. Sasha's giant leap on land may yield clues as to how the tigers of the Sunderbonds make their dramatic leaps out of the water. An underwater leap must engage the same powerful leg muscles as a land-based jump. When the big cat rises out of the water, it stretches its front legs high into the air to achieve their maximum reach. And just like Sasha, when a waterborne tiger reaches the top of its leap, the claws emerge and engage its prey, pulling its victim into the water. This big cat's ability to swim and strike prey at sea reveals how big cats push the limits in the hunt for food. But new science reveals that even these giant predators need to show restraint. A big cat's most powerful weapon may actually be a gentle touch. In a surprising revelation, it may not be the crushing power of their jaws that kills a big cat's big prey. Their deadly secret may be a single, delicate bite. It's night in Tanzania, and hungry cats are on the prowl. 23-year-old Isa, a farmer, is returning from the fields. When he reaches the fringe of his village, he's ambushed from behind by a lion. The cat's three-inch canines pierce Issa's upper torso. His scars reveal surprising evidence of how a big cat's specialized bite actually works. Yeah, you have to remember when you open a lion's mouth, what you're looking at is something just about like that. And this is the spread that they have for those large jaws, plus all the huge temporal mass muscle that they have on their skull. Um, We'd be very quick work. We come apart like Cornish game hens that are overcooked compared to the other things that they tackle. Isa was lucky. A big cat's jaws specialize in the kill. It's what sets them apart from other top carnivores. Many giant predators use their deadly bite to dispatch giant prey. But a big cat's death bite kills with just four teeth, the canines. The secret to their death grip may lie in the empty space just behind these teeth. As the cat's jaws clamp down on prey, the flesh of the victim falls into this gap, allowing the massive canines to make a deeper and deadlier bite. With a jaw specially designed for the kill, and powerful muscles driving the fangs. The lion could have finished off Isa with a single bite. But it didn't. The question is why. Frank Mendel, an anatomist at the University of Buffalo, studies the killing bites of big cats. The tendency is to think these animals, because they're big and ferocious looking, always apply great power to everything. The fact that these cats pick up their little kittens that weigh two or three pounds, carry them around, obviously they don't hurt those. So these, these cats can control the power, obviously, that they apply and use it accordingly. When it comes to killing, big cats actually scale the strength of their bite to the size of their prey. On small prey, one lightning-fast strike on the back of the neck can sever the spinal column and bring immediate paralysis. But on giant prey, big cats may pull back from their maximum bite and kill with a highly specialized technique. They go right for the most vulnerable place on a big animal's body, its throat. A big cat's powerful jaws can easily rip out the throat of most large prey, but they don't. In fact, throat bites often leave no puncture wounds or blood behind. This is rare video of an eight-month-old tiger killed by a larger male. There's almost no blood. The kill was achieved with small puncture wounds 
eerily similar to vampires. What is going on here? Frank wanted to solve the mystery. How do big cats actually kill giant prey? And why aren't they using all the power at their disposal? Evidence comes from a surprising source, nature films. Frank believes he can rule out suffocation. You see the cat run down the, the prey or ambush the prey, and the animal quits struggling very, very quickly. But the fact that the animal quit struggling so quickly suggests to me that it wasn't strangulation. That was a big surprise. So if the cat's throat bite isn't strangling its victims, what's it doing? Frank believes the cats are executing an almost surgical kill, cutting off oxygen flow to the brain instead with a surprising show of force, a single soft bite. Frank believes big cats kill giant prey by clamping their jaws down around the victim's throat. As they close their jaws, the canines sink into the soft space between the windpipe and the spine. The trachea slides into the jaw's natural gap. The cat instinctively clamps down on the victim until it pinches the carotid arteries and cuts off blood flow to the brain. The victim passes out with little time for a struggle. A big cat would likely need only a fraction of its jaw strength to pinch the victim's carotids. This would explain why the throat of the prey can be left intact with barely any blood when the killing is over. The lion that attacked Issa left two simple scars, suggesting a quick low-level pinch. If the cat had chosen a bone-crushing bite instead, Issa wouldn't have survived. So big cats may only use a fraction of their strength to kill the largest prey. And they may actually deliver their most powerful bites to smaller victims. When a big cat takes down smaller prey, the powerful jaws drive the canine straight through the victim's skull and spine as fast and powerfully as possible. Big Cat's ability to tailor their death bites to their victims confirms their status as finely engineered predators. Hypercarnivores. Apex predators. Top of the food chain species. But now, there may be a contender to the throne. A big cat. Twice as big as lions and tigers. Is this the face of the ultimate predator, the biggest cat of all? In Africa, lions execute their signature strike, a group ambush. Two men try to escape, but are overtaken in seconds. In the savannah, a leopard kills a fleet-footed antelope nearly its own size and still has enough energy to haul the meal high into a tree. And in India, a solitary tiger uses another powerful weapon, highly evolved camouflage to stalk its prey. It enters the swamp and uses its powerful legs to propel itself through and even out of the water. These big cats have evolved special tools to exploit their swamp, forest, and savanna environments. The two biggest cats, lions and tigers, look like distinctly different predators to the naked eye. But deep down, they're virtually the same creature, built from the same essential hardware. Their bones say it all. Peel back a lion's and tiger's skin, and the truth is revealed. Evidence of a common ancestor close to five million years ago. Their skulls are almost identical. The wing-shaped design allows for the attachment of giant muscle, and 30 teeth line their massive jaws. 
Specially engineered to pierce tough hides and tear through flesh. It's the shared hardware of some of the world's top predators, the big cats. Their common, highly evolved design is the one reason they appear to be perfect. Compared to their smaller cousins, they're fast, powerful, and even more deadly. But are they really the ultimate cats? Like every predator, these animals also have limitations. When the lions targeted the men in Tanzania, they were exploiting their natural advantage. Speed. Up to 35 miles per hour, humans barely sprint half that fast. In two bounds, the lions probably covered as much ground as the two men did in 10. But out on the savanna, a lion's speed can be a shortcoming. Surprisingly, lions succeed in the hunt only 25% of the time. One reason is that a lion can only maintain its top speed for a few seconds, while their prey can usually endure for much longer. Even this massive Cape Buffalo. Research shows zebras can accelerate and outrun a lion on open ground in less than six seconds. Gazelles do it in just four. Lions just aren't fast enough most of the time. So if lions and tigers are not 100% perfect predators, is it possible to engineer a cat that is? What would an ultimate cat look like? Would it be bigger, better? This is Simbad, a captive bred super cat. Not a lion or a tiger, but a liger. At 900 pounds, Simbad is almost a hundred times the size of a house cat and twice the weight of a lion or tiger. Dr. Bhagavan Antel has raised Simbad since he was born. Oh, this Bengal tiger is about 500 pounds, a fully mature male. He's got a large head, big bone structure, but it's dwarfed when you see this huge liger boy. His head is almost twice the size of this Bengal tiger's. It's so long from tip to nose here that you just got an enormous structure. The width in these huge jaw muscles and these big bones just make him be an enormous character. You're a good boy. This liger is the product of bizarre breeding. They do not exist in the wild. A liger is created by breeding a male lion with a female tiger. The result is a hybrid offspring that is abnormally large. In size and weight, a liger simply dwarfs its parents. Its massive skull alone can be 40% larger than a lion's or tiger's. They have enormous thick bone structure and can be actually the size of their mother and father combined. Enormous beasts. Scientists are still trying to understand why hybrids like ligers can become so much larger than their parents. What they do know is that ligers are missing the growth inhibiting gene that keeps them at a normal size. They only live in captivity, but the scale of their predatory tools is unmatched, even in nature. Remember Sasha, the leaping tiger that grabbed prey almost 12 feet in the air. Simbad's able to reach that same height without even leaving the ground. Ligers share the same ancestral hardware with other big cats. The only real difference is size. Like lions and tigers, a liger's massive canines are set deep inside the skull, like giant screws. Big cats have enormously long teeth, but a lot of the tooth is actually hidden inside the skull. This much of the tooth you can kind of see is covered in enamel. That's how much of the tooth actually is exposed and is used for the killing bite. The rest of this is inside the skull. Deep inside the skull, it's planted in and held fast so that it's able to take the enormous torque that'll be produced by the animal biting down and then pulling back. If it had a smaller structure to it, these teeth would end up breaking off. But this is what holds it into place. 
Out in the wild, this bonding of skull and teeth helps ensure that lions and tigers have few rivals. Smaller cats wouldn't stand a chance in a battle with their larger cousins. Lions have been known to bite right through smaller cats' skulls. But what about ligers? With their supersized claws, teeth, and jaws, enable them to win a battle with a lion or tiger. If such a battle ever occurred, the victory would be hard fought. In a big battle between some tigers, we've seen some tigers battling away, and you'll find actually tigers that have, have died in battles with other tigers or have gone through real hard fights. The whole claw can come in and it can snap off inside here. This has the capacity to break, and you'll find claws embedded into the hides of other tigers, and you have to pull them out with a hemostat to even remove them. Because ligers are the result of human-directed crossbreeding, they've never walked the plains of Africa or the forests of Asia. It's impossible to say if one of them could even survive on the scorched plains or steamy jungles. Would a liger be a solitary hunter like its mother? Or execute the group hunting strategy of a pride like its father? Would the golden color of a lion and the stripes of a tiger be a help or a hindrance in stalking prey? And would its massive frame hinder its ability to execute successful ambush strikes? One piece of evidence suggests that ligers wouldn't do well in the wild. Researchers suspect the liger's size would be its own worst enemy. A 500-pound lion tires after just 100 yards in a chase. Thousand-pound liger would falter much sooner. A liger may be the ultimate cat in size and perhaps power, but they are just too big and heavy to win the wars that big cats must wage. The biggest threat to the survival of big cats today are not genetically engineered super cats, but humans. Experts say that Africa's lions may soon be pushed to extinction due largely to loss of habitat. While in Asia, deforestation and poaching have placed tigers on the endangered list. Left on their own, the lion, tiger, and leopard have proven to be true masters of survival. And now we know why. Their entire bodies are engineered for predatory power. A balance of size, weight, intelligence, and cunning. From the advanced design of the feet they walk on, to the complex engineering of their eyes, muscles, and skulls. It's a total package of hardware and capability been refined over millions of years. Prowling the savanna, forest, and even up in the trees. They are the ultimate cats. <laughs>